how much you you estimated exactly how much it would cost to actually go out there take the take all the scientists out to the great pyramid restore it and actually test it against your theory to see if it works the way you think it works no i did not no i wouldn't even dare that <laughs> are you kidding me uh, i mean yeah I, I, I may have balls but they're not that big <laughs> we couldn't, I, I don't have i don't have the uh no, I don't have the gravitas the, uh, to to do something like that. Though in my book, didn't you estimate it? No, no. I, there was a, a, a an estimator who uh, his job is to do uh, cost estimations for building power plants. Okay. Okay. So he emailed me, uh, and he laid out a, a quote for what it would cost to create the Great Pyramid, assuming that it would produce like 25 gigawatts of, of power. And, 25 gigawatts. And he estimated that it would be around $25 billion. But where would that money come? What, where does that cost go to? Like what specifically does accumulate? What, what specifically does it take all that money to do? Um, that's the extraction of the the rock, the rock, the, the crafting of it, the transportation of it. That's uh, just rock. the rocks. But I think, yeah. But I I really don't know. I mean, you, when when we talk about building a pyramid today and using our technology, the technology that we're familiar with, mm -hmm. um, there was an estimate that was made by. Uh, the director of the Limestone Institute in Indiana, his name was Merle Bucker, and he was uh, asked uh, for a, an estimate by Richard Noon, who wrote a, a book called Five Five Two Thousand. Very unfortunate title, but you know it was a good book. It had a lot of good five, information. Five Five Two Thousand. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was a doomsday type of book, right? So. Well, he claimed the, the Earth was the world was going to end in the year two thousand. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Planet alignments, and there'll be a pole shift, and then everybody will fly. A off pole shift. It. So, <laughs> but I, I, I mean, Richard is a wonderful guy. I mm. met him; he's a great guy, and his book is loaded with information. Um, anyway, so he had included in his book the uh, the estimate that he got from Mel Bucker, and Mel Bucker said that the thirty three quarries that they have around Bedford, Indiana, they would, uh, if they tripled their output to quarry and uh, and cut enough stone to build the pyramid, the Great Pyramid, a Great Pyramid, it would uh, take 27 years just to quarry it and, and, uh, and deliver it to the site. That doesn't even mean that doesn't mean putting it together. They're just delivering the stone, and that's assuming no that's assuming no equipment breakdowns, no uh, union strife, or you know, labor problems or anything like that. Full tripling the output. Tripling their output of would that, take all their quarries. Did they get all and, what was, and, what was, and that was the cost was what again? Uh, the cost, it, he didn't put a cost on it. He just uh, said it would be 27 years. Oh, okay. The 25 billion was to actually com uh, complete the pyramid. Oh, that was uh, an estimate from this um, this estimator in England. Oh, okay. Got so, it. I mean, that is like, you know, you have, <laughs> ever since people have uh, studied the Great Pyramid and wrote about it, there have been, you know, uh, oh, I don't know. Uh, as many people has a, who have opined about building it, uh, you have that many different ideas of how many people it took and what they would do, and you know, and how they would do it. You know, you've got estimates from ten thousand workers to hundred thousand workers, mm -hmm. from twenty years to a hundred years to build it. You know, it's like uh, there's nothing realistic. Or uh, factual, <clears throat> really hard factual, uh, that uh, you can you can assert this is the correct, this is correct, mm -hmm. until you actually do it and you have have some results. So I don't know. 
I mean, we don't know how the how the, the uh, Egyptians did it. And really, right now, we don't know how we would do it because, you know, it's, uh, armchair theorists are not going to do it. They're not going to build it. You're going to need professionals uh, who get involved and uh, and upgrade just about every technology that they're going to use in order to accomplish it. Mm. You know, whether it's a quarry worker who has to, or a quarry company <clears throat> that has to uh, install precision machining that will hold tolerances on blocks of limestone to within 10 thousandths of an inch instead of a quarter of an inch, which, which they, may, they may be currently working to. And that's a huge step to take when you, because you have, uh, you know, when you look at craft skills, you go from like quarry working uh, to woodworking to metalworking, uh, where you've got machining, then within metalworking, you've got machining, you've got tool making, you've got gauge making, uh, <clears throat> and all of those particular craft trades work to different tolerances. And uh, the more zeros you put after a, a decimal point <laughs> when it comes to the tolerance uh, on, on a dimension, the more expensive it, it, it is to make because right. it takes longer to make and the people who are actually creating it are paid more. So you pay more for a tool maker than, say, a machinist. You mm -hmm. pay more for a machinist than, uh, say, a carpenter, you know. It, it's all about uh, how much you invest in a person uh, and what real, how really are they are adaptable they are to working to within those really, really tight tolerances, mm. really small tolerances. Yeah, because even like the buildings that you see today, some of the, even the skyscrapers, if you were to measure the base of those skyscrapers, they're within, like, if I'm if I'm correct, I think they're within a, a six inch degree of tolerance. There could, they can be like the square, they could be six inches off square and they can still build according to code, like a skyscraper. Really? Yeah. I thought I got that from your book, maybe not. <clears throat> mm, no. Okay. But like, you, you know, <laughs> you correlate the, the, the main thing about this precision is like, you don't have to have precision without a function. Like the, the, the goal of precision is function, right? right? Like you don't, there's no need to make those things or these blocks, for example, right. in the Serapium. They don't, what's the point of making them that precise unless they are, it's, necess, it's necessary for a function. Right, exactly. Uh, the, only other, the only other reason why they would uh, be that precise is that they were employing tools and methods that were capable of no less of precision. Mm -hmm.